My name is David Saul, Senior Vice President and Chief Scientist at State Street, and today I'm going to talk about semantic data standards and specifically a proof of concept that State Street has underway to look at the financial industry business ontology as part of our overall data governance program. Uh, my comments today are represent my own views and are not necessarily those of State Street or any of its subsidiaries. I'd like to go back to uh, the agenda. I'm going to start with an introduction of uh, some material that you may already be familiar with, uh, the financial crisis of 2008, which I'm going to assert was primarily a crisis for lack of data and understanding of that data. I'm going to talk about uh, semantics as a way to uh, deal with that lack of understanding, specifically the uh, FIBO standard from the EDM Council, and then uh, spend the majority of the time talking about the uh, proof of concept that we're doing, uh, its architecture approach and findings to date, and then uh, some follow-up material. The essential question is, as an organization, do you know where your data is? The data that's important to the management and operation of your organization, what it means, how to use it best, how to comply with regulations. Example we had back in 2008, uh, the general belief was that there was this thing of the financial economy uh, several large organizations uh, exchanged information and transactions with one another, and that really had uh, no impact on the general public and, and the larger uh, real economy. Uh, what we discovered in 2008 was that was not true at all. The financial economy had many more players. There was a much higher degree of interconnectedness than uh, anyone thought, and there were organizations uh, beyond the financial industry that were engaged in this. But um, most significantly, uh, when we had the financial crisis, it was not restricted just to those financial organizations. It had impact on the real economy, on uh, jobs, and uh, real people. Uh, one way of dealing with this is if we think of every financial transaction as a contract, today, and hopefully uh, it doesn't look like the picture on the far left, uh, contracts are, uh, to, to a large extent, still only expressed in paper, or if they're in machine-readable form, they're just a representation of that paper. They lack precision. There's a high degree of manual intervention required, and most importantly, uh, the lack of understanding of what the terms, conditions, and data of those contracts mean. Uh, what we're trying to move to is a future state, which we're calling smart contracts, where we have a degree of data transparency. Everything is well-defined. It's precise. It's verifiable in, a, in an automated way and is represented uh, semantically. And uh, at the bottom of the slide, you see a brief definition of, of what a smart contract is, representing uh, standardization, the ability to be executed, and precise definition. So we go back to that first question that I raised about, do you know where your data is, uh, and expand this into uh, four other questions uh, the first one about knowing where your data is relates to not just its physical location, but uh, questions of ownership, data governance, uh, who can make decisions about that data, and what's really important to the operation of an organization. Uh, the second question applies across uh, many industries, not just financial services, which is, what regulations apply, not just in a steady state condition, but in periods of stress. 
The third question is the various uh, vendor solutions, hardware, software, uh, professional services. Are they really matching what you need to do? And then finally, uh, what standards can do to help you in that regard? Now today, the traditional way of dealing with data and answering those kinds of questions is to extract data from various transactional and operational systems uh, using uh, ETL programs uh, where the T stands for transformation. We store those in the, in the case of uh, things like data analytics and data warehouses. We have a database schema that represents some subset of the information from the operational systems. And then we have a, on the right-hand side, a risk repository, which is the same technology as the data warehouse, but might be a di different data schema, a different set of extractions, different set of uh, transformations for uh, risk management and regulatory reporting. So it's not surprising we often have reconciliation issues because those schemas don't match and the time the data was pulled uh, may differ as well. So the challenge is uh, organizations want to create a value from their existing data assets. They recognize that data is an asset. It can be used and monetized. And at the same time, as the scope and uh, complexity of risk management and regulatory increases, they have to meet all of those mandates. How do they do both of those at the same time at a reasonable cost? And the answer to that is semantic data standards. Uh, semantic data is based on the semantic web, which has now been around for uh, over 10 years. It's based on the conceptually on the, the same concept that underlies the World Wide Web today, where we have uh, billions and billions of links that, that are occurring on a daily basis. Uh, what semantics does is it takes common concepts and creates links between those. And it's able to work on all kinds of data. It's not just data stored in databases, but semi-structured data in spreadsheets, unstructured data in, in, in reports and presentations, builds on a history of creating metadata to describe uh, what the data is, and uh, puts that into a standardized uh, form so that you now have precision associated with uh, meaning. And if you find the name of a particular company like State Street uh, and it's, it's abbreviated or spelled differently or has corporation added on to it and it's in different uh, technologies, as human beings we can understand conceptually that that means the same thing what semantic technology does is it creates uh, a machine readable and precise way of linking those together. The uh, legal entity identi identifier or LEI is probably the best example of that. And what I'm going to talk about now is a specific implementation of semantic technology, the financial industry business ontology or FIBO. Just remind everybody that on Ontology is the term that's used to describe semantic meaning as well as the relationship between data elements. So it's, again, it builds on uh, data dictionaries and taxonomies. The uh, three elements that come together to uh, create any standard, uh, first of all, you need industry input, which is where the expertise lies. You need a uh, regulatory structure in, in order to create these standards. And then uh, the standard, there needs to be a process itself uh, that, that standardizes how the standards are created. And in this case, uh, the EDM Council is driving the industry input. We have uh, multiple regulators who are interested in the financial industry. In the case of FIBO, it's the uh, OMG or Object Management Group process 
that's used for standardization. So uh, FIBO is, when it is finished, will be a representation of all of the data elements that are necessary for the financial industry. And I should mention that other industries are creating their own ontologies that uh, they can use to standardize interchange of information. So an example here, another example here would be in the biotech industry for standardization of ontologies for uh, drug testing. Uh, this chart, uh, courtesy of Mike Bennett from EDM Council, gives you a high level view of the various elements uh, and the color coding is associated with, with their status uh, in the standardization process. So what would an ontology look like? And here's an example. Uh, this is uh, courtesy of uh, colleague David Newman from Wells Fargo Bank, who's one of the major contributors to FIBO. What you see here is a graphical representation of an interest rate swap with the various elements in it. So remember, an ontology is the semantic meaning and relationship. So a graph is a very good way of showing both of those simultaneously. So now you can see the elements as, as well as the relationship to one another. What you, the swap you have here, the, the two legs of the swap are represented graphically. Another way in which ontologies are frequently represented is in uh, tabular form. So let's get on to the uh, State Street proof of concept, which, uh, which has uh, been underway. So uh, what I'm going to report to you on it is work in progress. Uh, the purpose of it was to see if we could take the portions of FIBO that have been defined to date and standardized to harmonize derivative and uh, corporate entity data across uh, actual real data from one of our transactional operational systems. And then once we saw whether FIBO uh, was complete and correct, whether that gave us a leg up on uh, reporting and analytics, as well as uh, looking at elements for risk management. So going back to that synergy that I described on an earlier slide. Uh, the approach we took was to take real data, no, no transformation of the data was done at all. Uh, it was extracted directly from a, uh, an operational system. And we used a, a platform uh, that is, is one of multiples available to store that ontology uh, and, and the data in a, a in itself in a, a standardized form and seeing whether we could do this quickly and it would create an environment where uh, business users and risk management people could very quickly without any coding uh, look at that data, gain, gain insights into it. Uh, the participants on the POC uh, State Street uh, provided uh, the business environment as well as uh, the, da the uh, real data. The EDM Council gave us uh, expertise on uh, FIBO itself. Uh, Cambridge Semantics, a vendor in the space, uh, provided their operational platform as well as some uh, services, some of their professional services in how to implement their platform. Dun & Bradstreet was a source of the business entity data and uh, Wells Fargo uh, provided uh, consultation on FIBO. Uh, this is a picture of a high-level architecture. Uh, we, on the upper left-hand side, you see we were drawing uh, data from our operational derivative system, uh, which happens to be a, a, a vendor platform. It's not, it's not something we wrote in-house. In the lower left-hand corner, Dun & Bradstreet, uh, provided their entity and corporate hierarchy data. We had the FIBO model itself, which was stored in ANZO. ANZO is the name of the Cambridge uh, semantics product. And then on the right-hand side, uh, various outputs. 
we went through four uh, stages. Well, to date, we've gone through four stages in, in the POC. The first was to take FIBO, and this is uh, the standardized FIBO as anyone can download it from the EDM Council site. Uh, wasn't specially created for us. And we loaded that uh, into the ANZO tool to make sure that the uh, tool was able to uh, fully uh, consume all of, all of FIBO. Uh, that was a very uh, simple and straightforward step. Uh, the next step was to take this uh, completely unmodified data from our derivative system and map that uh, against FIBO. So this this was really uh, was there uh, did did FI, was FIBO able to map uh, every data element that we had uh, loaded into it? And uh, to date, uh, we 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 started with a small subset, but to date. We've had several thousand uh, transactions uh, that we've been able to uh, map against FIBO. Uh, again, that was uh, relatively straightforward, but I'll, I'll talk about the uh, next slide on the findings. Uh, we were new to FIBO, so uh, the consulting expertise from uh, the EDM Council came in very handy here. OK, the next step was really automatic the now that the data was was loaded the tool was was able to uh, take that data classify it uh, sort it uh, by uh, type of element as defined in the in the FIBO ontology so if we wanted to look at the data based on its corporate entity or geography or currency uh, all, all of those things came out um, in, in, in a very straightforward way. And then we've just gotten started with now taking that data. Can we, can we do things to create some simple uh, graphics, uh, heat maps, pie charts, and, and the like that would be useful uh, to business analysts? So let, me, let me tell you about the findings and, and what we've found out so far. Uh, the FIBO model works. Uh, it is uh, complete. Uh, mapping it against operational data is uh, is is quite simple. Uh, in particular, looking at uh, legacy data sources uh, because we had different technologies for the uh, derivatives data as well as the data coming from uh, DNB. Uh, did did that with uh, with no issues at all, uh, and in fact we did this in two steps. We did it uh, first with the data, and then we added the Dun and Bradstreet data, uh, and we didn't we didn't have to do anything to make any changes. So once you've mapped data against FIBO, you don't need to map it a second time. Uh, main challenge we found is that. Uh, FIBO, even for the subset that we were dealing with of interest rate swaps, uh, it, it, it is mostly intuitive, but uh, th there's a lot in it and there is a, a, a learning curve. So we had the advantage of being able to get our questions answered very, very quickly. Uh, if someone was approaching this with without that, uh, they, they would need some 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 education, some training, and allow some time to become uh, familiar with, with FIBO. Uh, while we weren't uh, in particular, and, uh, and, and I'm not recommending one vendor over another, uh, we did find that this particular platform, Anzo, uh, worked well for us. It, uh, it, it performed as, as advertised, uh, the mapping, both of the FIBO model and then of the operational data uh, were uh, really very uh, uh, straightforward processes, and uh, we didn't have any issues with that. Um, and then finally, the, the last point, the bullet on this slide, is that um, while we were looking at 
FIBO for this particular set of use, uh, in terms of next steps, the insights that business users and, and risk management professionals are going to be able to gain uh, can be very helpful in an overall data governance program. So really getting at that question I asked at the beginning of do where your data is. Uh, this, this is really uh, my, my next to last slide. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, but the point here is that by using semantic standards and FIBO in particular, uh, multiple constituents are able to uh, each benefit uh, in, their, in their own way and through creator transparency of this financial data, we're improving the overall trust in the financial system. And again, going back to the beginning, uh, this is something that we lost in 2008 and we're, we're still trying to regain because people uh, don't understand it. So uh, financial services companies like ourselves benefit, uh, regular, regulators benefit because they have more transparent access to the data and they're better able to integrate it. Uh, product and service providers uh, have a better set of requirements for what uh, software and services they should build and the standards organizations are, are doing their job of creating industry standards. Uh, this next slide just has some quotes from some of the various participants in the, in, in the, in the study that reinforces the point that this has uh, multiple beneficiaries. And my last slide is if, uh, if, you, if you find this valuable and you're interested doing something like this yourself, uh, take a look at it in the context of a larger data discovery and data governance program. Uh, understand w which requirements from the regulators you're, you're trying to match up to. Uh, create a heat map of your existing IT, hardware, software, professional services, consulting solutions to make sure they match your requirements. And then if you want to become part of the future of FIBO or, or really any semantic standard, uh, you, you should uh, put your hand up because these organizations uh, are volunteer, uh, volunteers bringing their expertise and uh, the, the better the expertise, the better the standard. And then uh, finally, uh, here are further contacts from the uh, various participants in the POC if you need uh, more information. And uh, thank you for your time today.